What up, guys? It's Mr. Dan Terry Marie Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, May 24th, 2019. Larry and some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor is back in action in the first teaser trailer for Terminator Dark Fate. The clip released on Thursday focuses on a new group of heroes led by star Mackenzie Davis as they battle a new cyborg portrayed by Gabriel Luna who can make liquid copies of himself. Hamilton then arrives on the scene to take out Luna and team up with Mackenzie in order to protect Natalia Reyes whose character is being hunted down by the evil Skynet. The trailer also features the group recruiting series star Arnold Schwarzenegger and teases how Mackenzie's character is both a human and a robot. Terminator Dark Fate from Deadpool director Tim Miller is set to arrive in theaters on November 1st. The film takes place after the events of 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day and is being produced by James Cameron, who originally helmed the first two films in the sci-fi series. Cameron was not involved in the handful of other Terminator films uh, having been released since 1991, including 2003's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, 2009's Terminator Salvation, and 2015's Terminator Genesis. Jimmy Kimmel has said that classic television shows All in the Family and the Jeffersons are more relevant than ever. The late night host's comments come before ABC's live in front of a studio audience Norman Lear's All in the Family and the Jeffersons special aired on Wednesday. The live rendition will recreate one episode from each series using a star-studded cast that includes Woody Harrelson as Archie Bunker and Jamie Foxx as George Jefferson. Kimmo, who is hosting and executive producing the project with Norm and Lear, said in a new video, These shows are even more relevant now than they were. People forget that they were controversial, and maybe if we had social media back then, then these shows wouldn't have survived. Or maybe they would have been even bigger than they were. Lear was behind All in the Family, which ran from 1971 to 1979, and then spin off The Jeffersons, which ran from 1975 to 1985. Lear said in the clip, When I was watching a run-through of the... Uh, Jefferson's, I heard dialogue that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe came out of the 1970s because it could be the language of today. Marissa Tomei stars at Edith Bunker, Wanda Sykes as Louise Jefferson, Will Farrell, Carrie Washington, Ellie Kempler, Ike Barinholtz, Sean Hayes, and Anthony Anderson also are also set to star on the 90-minute live special which airs at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Millie Bobby Brown appeared on The Tonight Show, where she discussed meeting Robert and Bindi Irwin in Australia. Brown impersonated Robert and mentioned how the conversationist talked her into holding a snake. Brown said, imitating Robert's voice, while Jimmy Fallon displayed a photo of the moment, he was like, mate, wait, you gotta hold a snake. Mate, it's gonna happen. Put it around your neck. The actor said she spoke to Robert about getting Taurus as his pets, finally decided to take home two of them. Brown, who will next be seen in Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which arrived in theaters on May 31st, also impersonated late singer Amy Winehouse. Brown performed Winehouse's You Know I'm No Good after Fallon shared footage of the Stranger Things star singing Winehouse's Valerie at the age of five. Brown and Fallon then took part in the game of Beat Battle, where they took turns singing as many songs as they could think of to go along with the beat played by The Roots. Brown performed songs such as Call Me Baby by Carly Rae Jessup, Juice by Lizzo, and Royal by Lord, among others. Ramona Singer is taking responsibility after feuding with Dorinda Melody over a seating at a charity event. The 62-year-old, uh, 62-year-old television personality spoke out during Wednesday's episode of Watch What Happens Live after Melody, her Real Housewives of New York co-star, accused her of lying about the 2018 Angel Ball. Singer says, it's fine. At the Angel Ball, I really perceived that it was a different table. Now I know never to swear on my daughter's life because I may look ageless, but my mind isn't. I didn't get it right. She added, I messed up. Singer had invited Melody to the Angel Ball in October, but ended up at a different table. The pair clashed about the mix-up during April's edition of Real Housewives of New York. Melody said on the show, you need to say you're sorry that you ditched me for a better table when you told me we're gonna, where we're going together. 
Singer blamed the event organizers in an interview with Page Six in October. She says, I was very happy to support the Angel Bowl, and I thought Dorinda was sitting with me. She was upset. I had no control of it, and I said I was sorry. On Watch What Happens Live, Singer also addressed Melody's issues with her showing up late to Luann de la Cepes's home during this week's episode. Singer had a birthday celebration with friends the night before, but didn't invite any of her co-stars. The star explained, when it came to the birthday party, I have a lot of different girlfriends. It was something separate from the other girlfriends. I had like five different birthday parties. She says, it is what it is. Sorry. The popular dating show Love Island will premiere a U.S. version on CBS in July. CBS confirmed in a press release Wednesday the American version of the British reality series will air five nights a week beginning July 9th. The new Love Island will run through August 7th. The show follows a group of singles who must com uh, couple up every few days to avoid being eliminated from the group villa in Fiji. So we have the senior vice president of alternative programming, Sharon Vong, said, As the buzziest uh, reality show in the UK, Love Island has won the hearts of viewers across the pond as well as around the world. Creating appointment viewing and fanfare for audiences everywhere, we are thrilled to bring our version of this cultural phenomenon to CBS. She added, this fun, lightheaded series is, is like watching your favorite romantic comedy five nights a week. Love uh, Island shared a video teaser Wednesday on Twitter. Uh, the caption reads, kiss your social life goodbye. Your new obsession will be five nights a week starting on July 9th. Love yourself, uh, uh, Love Island, USA. The British version of Love Island has aired on ITV2 since June 2015. The show will premiere its fifth season June 3rd. Bishop Barton says The Hill's new beginning shows a new authentic side of herself. The 33 year old actress said in an interview with the New York Times published Thursday she joined the MTV series to make friends and a new identity for herself. She said, I hope to situate myself in a different part of my career, make a new friend group, and move out of the stall typecasting I've gotten myself into. Barton is best known for playing Marissa Cooper on the Fox series The O.C. The show takes place in Orange County, California, where the MTV reality series Laguna Beach and the Hills are also set. Barton said, people seem to have always associated me with one thing, and I thought it would be a good opportunity for them to get to see the real me. The Hills has uh, had a season run from 2006 to 2018. The Hills New Beginnings features several returning cast members, including Hadi Montage, Whitney Port, Audrina Patrick, and Stephen Pratt. Barton says, it was just funny in the beginning because they do have a lot of drama and history that obviously I'm not proud to. Barton became close friends with Potridge and also found Pratt and Jason Wilder surprisingly chill. She says, I think what's really interesting is the people I was most afraid of going into this turned out to be the easiest people to deal with, so I found that to be really funny, and it's an obvious life lesson. The Hills New Beginnings premieres June 24th on MTV. Barton previously teased drama to come in the April issue of Cosmopolitan. She says, I sometimes get it in over my head. I didn't really consider the fact that they're all such close friends. They're family girls. They all have husbands or ex-husbands and babies. Amelia Clark turned down the Fifty Shades movie to avoid appearing nude on screen. 32-year-old British actress said in an interview with The Hollywood the Reporter published Thursday, she passed on Anastasia Steele, the court of Johnson's role in the film series, because she already felt pigeonholed by her nudity on Game of Thrones. Clark explained, well, director Sam Taylor Johnson is a magician. I love her, and I thought her vision was beautiful. But the last time that I was naked on camera on Game of Thrones was a long time ago, and yet it is the only question that I would ever get asked because I'm a woman. She said of her Game of Thrones character, the nearest to Jarian, it's annoying as heck, and I'm sick and tired of it because I did it for the character. So that coming up, I was like, I can't. Clark says the amount of focus on her Game of Thrones nudity made her especially reluctant to appear on the Fifty Shades films, which are based on the E.L. James erotic novels. She says, I did a minimum amount and I picked and hold for life. So me saying yes to, to that, where the entire thing is about sensuality, sex, and being naked and all that stuff, I was just like, no way am I going to voluntarily walk into that situation, then never be able to look someone in the eye and be like, no, you can't keep asking this question. Clark previously discussed Fifty Shades in the July 2015 issue of Marie Claire UK. A Game of Thrones ended Sunday after an eight-season run on HBO. 
Clark told the Hollywood Reporter she hopes to find a new project without potential sequels. She says, one thing I would never do is someone that has a sequel. Something that could have, like, and then two, and then three and four. I'd, I'd like to not do one of those things for a minute. Clark will next appear in the adaptation of the Joe Sharkey book, Above Suspicion. Cheryl Crow and Tom Hanks showed their support for veterans and their caretakers at a Today concert. The 57-year-old singer and 62-year-old actor attended the event, part of today's City Concert Series, Thursday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana. Crow performed Redemption Day, her duet with Johnny Cash, recorded before Cash's death in September 2003. She spoke to Today host Savannah Guthrie and Hanks about the song. Crow says, I think the song Redemption Day is indicative of the feeling we're having right now. I think Johnny Cash, who's featured on the song, would have been really proud to have a song come out now. She added, I recorded it in 96. I wrote it after visiting the troops in Bosnia. Then Johnny Cash recorded it right before he died. It's all about freedom. It's all about what these people do to make sure we have the freedoms that we have. The concert was co-hosted uh, by Elizabeth Dole's foundation and its Hidden Heroes campaign for military caregivers. Guthrie and Hanks spoke to various caretakers at the event. Hanks says no one wants to be going through a tough time alone. The work of Hidden Heroes is making sure that those people who have something they can contribute it, be it their expertise in a job that they have. Or as Elizabeth Dole says, a kid with a lawnmower can make a big difference with somebody uh, making a big difference in somebody's life. Redemption Day will appear in Crow's forthcoming duets album, Threads. The album will also feature the new songs Live Wire featuring Bonnie Raitt and Mavis Staples. The cast of Netflix's Full House have started production on the sitcom's upcoming fifth and final season. Uh, star Joey Sweden plays Stephanie, said on Instagram Wednesday, we're back, season five, table read today, and back to Rosal next week. Woohoo. Hashtag Full House Family. Um, hashtag season five. Hashtag Fuller House. Hashtag so good to be back. Sweden posted a selfie of herself smiling and holding up a Fuller House script. Other cast members to celebrate the start of the production included Bob Saget, who plays Danny Tanner, and Andrea Barber, who plays Kimmy. Um, Saget said alongside a selfie of himself with Barber and Candace Cameron Burke, some people that I love and will be fun to hang out with for at Fuller House. Mary Louise Parker will return to Broadway in a new play from Adam Rapp. The Entertainment Weekly confirmed Thursday the 54-year-old actress will star in a brand new production of Rapp's play, The Sound Inside. Rapp is also known for the play Red Light Winter. The line said, Parker will play Bella Bard, a Yale professor and novelist diagnosed with cancer. Will Hodgman will make his day Broadway debut as Bella's student, Christopher. Parker and Hodgman previously portrayed Bella and Christopher in a Williamstown Theater Festival performance of The Sound Inside. The original stadium was well received by critics. The Sound Inside will begin performances September 14th at Studio 54 and officially open on October 17th. The play is directed by David Cromer and produced by Jeffrey Richards, uh, Lincoln Center Theater, and Rebecca Gold. Parker's Broadway credits include Prelude to a Kiss, Proof, and Hydensburg. She played Amy Gardner on The West Wing and Natalie Botwin on Weeds. Ed Sheeran has announced on Instagram that his fourth studio album will be titled Number Six Collaborations Project and will, live on, will arrive on July 12th. The release will feature Sheeran teaming up with other artists on each track, including his recently released single with Justin Bieber, I Don't Care. A second song titled Cross Me features Chance the Rapper and PNB Rock will be released at midnight on Friday. Sharon said on Thursday, alongside a cover art for the album and a track listing the uh, that blocks out who will be featured on each song. Before I was signed in 2011, I made an EP called Number no. Five Collaborations Project. Since then, I've always wanted to do another, so I started at number six on my laptop when I was on tour last year. I'm a huge fan of all the artists I've collaborated with and have been uh, a lot of fun to make. Number six collaborations project will feature 15 songs, 
in total, including the tracks titled Beautiful People, South of the Border, Take Me Back to London, Best Part of Me, Antisocial, Remember the Name, Feels, Put It All on Me, Nothing on You, I Don't Want Your Money, A uh, Thousand Nights, Way to Break My Heart, and Blow. Five Seconds of Summer is back with a brand new music video. The Australian pop rock band shared a moody video Thursday for the new single, Easier. The video takes place in a game showing Luke Hemmings, Michael Clifford, Callum Hood, and Ashton Irwin tied up or dry as Hemmings sing about a toxic relationship. The group tweeted, watch the Easier video now on at, music, at YouTube Music, hashtag Five Seconds for Mars. Easier appears on Five Seconds of Summer's uh, forthcoming uh, studio album. The band told Rolling Stone that uh, the album is inspired by dark synth heavy 80s and 90s acts like the Pesh Mode and Nine Inch Nails. The group says there's a darker tone to this record intentionally. There's a growing attention to the industrial rhythm within the band. Five Seconds of Summer last released the album Young Blood in June and will join the Chainsmokers on tour in September. The, pa the band plans to keep releasing singles as it works on its new album. The group says, before the end of the year, we would love to have at least half the record released through singles. Five Seconds of Summer is known for the singles She Looks So Perfect, Amnesia, and Young Blood. The, uh, the band released its self-titled debut album in June 2014. Billie Eilish wants people to be open and proactive about their mental illness. The 17-year-old singer urged fans to take care of their mental health and each other in a PSA for Seize the, Aware, the Awkward, a mental health campaign. Illish says, it doesn't make you weak to ask for help. It shouldn't make you feel weak to anyone to ask anyone for help. You should be able to ask anyone for help, and everyone has to help someone if they need it. Um, she also says, starting that conversation, you don't have to make it super serious right away. You say, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Really, are you okay? She says, sometimes um, sometimes you don't even have to say anything to someone for them to know they understand. And they don't have to say anything to you. Sometimes it's about a hug. The Ocean's Eyes singer told fans to keep their eyes open and listen to each other. She says she's still learning the best way to care for herself and others. Elish said of mental health struggles and just dealing with it how I'm dealing with it. I'm trying my best. Obviously, I'm not a trained professional in any way. I don't want, um, since I don't want what I'm doing half the time, but I have seen it and I've been it. She also says, even if it's just a little more comfort, that can really mean a lot to someone. She also added, it's been like that for me. There have been certain people that have texted me right when I need to be texted, saying they love me and that they were thinking of me. It means a lot. Elish released her debut studio album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, in March. She previously discussed her struggles with depression in an interview with Zay Lowe on Beats One Radio. The singer says, Depression has controlled sort of everything in my life. I've always been a melancholy person. I feel like there are some people that neutrally, they're kind of happy. It's really insane to me. She added, It's different for some people, and it's okay. I feel that people are just so weird, and because people that are, aren't neutrally unhappy don't understand how it is. The comedic rap group The Lonely Island re released on Netflix Thursday what is described as a long-form visual poem titled The Unauthorized Bash Brothers Experience. The musical features uh, Lonely Island members Andy Samberg and Akivia Schaefer portraying former baseball stars Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire respectfully. Canseco and McGuire were known for the, as the Bash Brothers while they played together on the Oakland A's in the 1980s. Samberg and, and Schaefer rap together as the baseball duo and comes across a number of guest stars including Maya Rudolph, Jenny Slate, Sterling K. Brown, Sia, musical uh, group Haim, Stephanie uh, Batrice, Jim O'Hare, and Hannah Simone. The duo rapped about living large, being famous, and taking steroids. Lonely Island's Joe Taconi appeared as former NFL quarterback Joe Montana. The Lonely Island also released a Bash Brothers Experience album that features tracks from the special, including songs that feature vocals, uh, the last three, uh, Sia, Haim, and Rudolph. 
And that is your entertainment report for Friday, May 24th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Tuesday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y. M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great Memorial Day weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.